makes you look so different. <laughs> yeah. It makes you look younger, doesn't it? Schedule lineup 
but I don't announce a whole lot of, on, on our prayer. On Tuesday nights, the church is open from, I normally, it normally starts uh, open around 5.30 to 6, and we normally close at about 8 o'clock, but our official prayer time is, starts at 7 to 8, so if you're interested in just coming for a time, we, we corporately pray together in the, in the foyer, then when we enter in, everybody has their individual time to pray. So if you need to get away uh, from the house or get away from uh, maybe your husband or your wife for just an hour or something and pray and get some peace and quiet. I want you to know that the church is open on Tuesdays that we come and pray, not just just praying just for not just for ourselves, but also praying for our church and that God would continue to direct us and lead us in a way that is pleasing unto Him. Um, also, I want to make some announcements this morning. I got several, so just bear with me if you as you if you will. If you want to look in your bulletin, first of all is this, I want to say to the men's ministry, to all of the men that are here, you are invited Saturday, January the 26th at 6 p.m. as we start off the, the, the new year, continuing in our kingdom men's study. You can see Brother Daryl Stone if you have any questions about that. Um, also, I want you to encourage you to put this on your calendar, uh, the, our homecoming will be February the 3rd, February the 3rd at 11 a.m. The shepherds are going to be with us. Uh, there will be no Sunday school that morning. Service will start at 11 a.m. Uh, and we will have dinner to follow. So please plan on bringing a dish or tea or dessert to share afterwards. But make sure that you're here. I'm going to see this church. We're full in here today. I'm so thankful for that. But I want to see it packed out. Say amen for homecoming. We'll be celebrating 15 years of ministry. So what a blessing that will be for our church. And I also told them this, um, I told them this Sunday night, I believe, or Wednesday night. I didn't realize it until uh, the last Sunday evening. But I also just thought about this. January the 4th, 2009, I was ordained into the gospel, uh, the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I've been 10 years since I have been ordained to preach the word of God. So I'm thankful for what he's done in my life in the last 10 years through, through, through beginning in the, the, the youth ministry and also uh, of leading this great church. And I'm so thankful for that opportunity. But please don't forget to be with us for homecoming. The women's ministry, they moved. If, if you showed up Saturday, ladies, they are they're very sorry. But due to sickness, they, they had to postpone their women's ministry. They tried to get the word out as best as possible. Um, but pray for Sister Marie Carter. She's been having a lot of issues. Kidney stone, pre play, pray for her. But they moved that date to February the 9th. Uh, also, the Happy Seniors of Faith are going to be meeting this Thursday. January the 17th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, for a time of uh, food, fellowship, and Bible study. And please come out to be with them. All of those, anyone and everyone is welcome to the Happy Seniors of Faith uh, this coming Thursday. And I've got one more thing that I want to share with you this morning that is heavy on my heart. You should have got an insert in your bulletin, and it simply says on their marriage conference. Last year... As we closed out, to, or last year, just going through the year last year, I dealt with a lot of, of people, uh, young couples and, and older couples, just in their marriage and things that they were going through, and they would just come to me to pray, and, and I would just give them direction simply from the Word of God or advice from the Word of God. And God just began laying on my heart just this burden for marriages, because I believe without the shadow of a doubt, church, that the home and families are under attack. That the devil is doing everything that he can, I want you to know, to destroy your home and to destroy your marriage. And so God just began putting a burden on my heart for marriages and for homes. And so I started praying about it and started uh, just, just seeking God for direction. I got thinking about Brother Austin Deloach and, and Sister Jennifer, who is a pastor. Uh, Brother Austin is a pastor um, over in Lakeland. He also has a church in Homerville. Um, and I remember him telling me about how he and his wife... Right after they built their, their new church years ago, that they they came. I mean, they were on the borderline of being divorced. They separated. Were getting ready to draw up papers, and God just worked a miracle in their life and in their marriage. And you now, years later, they are still going strong, and they give all the glory to God. And a part of that, so I called him up and I said, Brother Austin, I said I'm going to talk to you about doing a marriage conference for our church. And so what we're going to do, you've got the dates that are on this piece of paper, Friday, February the 22nd. It will start at 7 p.m., and it will be here at the church, of course. 
Um, that evening, we're going to have worship, and then it will be followed with Brother Austin and Sister Jennifer will be up here sharing their testimony of how their life and their marriage almost was destroyed, but yet God healed them, and God saved their marriage, and let it be a testimony to you that if God did it for them, God can do it for you. I don't care how good you think that your marriage is. I don't care how good or bad. Can I tell you something right now? It might be good, but it can always be better. Amen? So I encourage you to truly consider coming to this marriage conference. And also on Saturday that morning, Saturday that morning, we'll come back in the sanctuary. We'll, we'll be at 9 o'clock. This is for anybody and everybody. This is people outside of our church and our church. They will come in on, on Saturday morning. We'll have the first session. We'll probably do a little bit of worship. We'll have the first session. We've got a booklet that you're going to receive that's got a, a whole outline of the teaching that's going to be going on between him and Sister Jennifer. Then we'll have a have, we'll have a break for just a little while, and then we'll come back and finish up with the second session. And so I really want to encourage you to please pray about this. Consider coming to this. There is one thing that you have to do, though, in order to get here, and, and I, I would like for you to sign up. The reason being... We do have limited space, and I hope that this church is full, but I don't want to just say anybody and everybody come, and then people come, and we have so many people that, that there's nowhere to sit, and I'm leaving for that. And we've had a lot of turnout and response already on Facebook. You can sign up today in the foyer. Well, on the table, there is a sign-up sheet, or you can go to our Facebook page, or you can go on our website. All of those are resources to sign up, but please put you and your spouse's name on there so we just know that you're coming. We need to know how many booklets to print. we got several other things we're going to be doing. We're going to be give, doing some giveaways to for date nights. We're going to give us some resources away on marriage and books and all these things. So please consider this, and please will you get signed up. All right, that's my plea about the marriage conference. Amen. But please be getting the word out about that. We want to share this. This is not just a resource for our church, but also for any church that is willing to come and to willing uh, to be a part of this. Um, at this time, before I go on anymore, if my men, if my ushers would come as we get ready to receive our morning offering today, uh, I want to remind you again, you can look at on our prayer list for those that are standing in need. If you would, check on those that are away from us or somebody that is not here. Uh, and also, as we take up our morning offering, as I say every Sunday morning, I encourage you, be faithful. Be faithful in what God has blessed you with. He's blessed us abundantly. And so I encourage you to give obediently, as the Word says. Malachi 3 speaks about how will we rob God. Do you know how we rob God? In our tithes and our offerings when we don't honor God the way that we should. Amen. Let's pray this morning as we're going to bless our offering today. Daddy, would you pray for us over the offering this morning? Our Heavenly Father, we want to come to you this morning, God. I just want to thank you. Thank you so much to be able to walk in your house today. Thank you for each person you sent today. Thank you for our people. Thank you for the history, Lord. I just pray for each one to get a blessing. Say it was good to be in your house, Lord. And maybe something he said they want to come back again, God. We pray for the soul of that. They want to hear him not say, Lord, you start dealing with the Holy Spirit, start dealing with their hearts right now. I pray for the soul to be revived today. Some of them down and out, I pray they walk out that door more lifted up than when they came. Pray for those who have been having a lot of people lose their loved ones. God, we just had to reach down and touch them burdened hearts. Lord, just let them know you to rise and make a mistake. I pray they will keep their eyes on you. And we ask you to bless the offering, God. And Lord, let it be glorified you, Lord. Bless each person. We ask you to bless the singing and the preaching and everything that takes place. And again, God, just thank you for blessing us for another year and watch over this year. We ask all this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to die. Amen and amen. 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 At this time, Sister Joe Skinner is going to come this morning and bring our special worship and special music as you receive and are given your offering today. Thank you. I, I would like to say um, I'm going to sing with no music. And I, I would like to say in God's word, he's... He says our age is nothing before him. Otherwise, I could not stand up here before you and sing, but I, I just hope my song blesses you. 
You may have great riches with money to burn, or maybe survival is your main concern. You may be world famous, but what good might that be? The ground is level at Calvary. Oh, the ground is level at Calvary. It's fully acceptable for you and for me. No matter who or what, when or where you may be, the ground is level at Calvary. Doctor or lawyer, beggar or thief, it makes God no difference who walks down that aisle. He said, who? Let them come unto me. The ground is level at Calvary. Oh, the ground is level at Calvary. It's fully acceptable for you and for me. No matter who or what. When or where you may be, the ground is level at Calvary. Thank you for sharing that this morning. I'll ask you just one more time just to stand up. We're actually just going to sing a little chorus. Sing this little chorus, old chorus, you'll know it. I'm going to be preaching on this morning about the, the first and the great commandment, and that's to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. To love you with all that you are. And John also wrote that we love him because he first loved us. Amen. Aren't you so thankful for all that Jesus Christ has done for you today? Aren't you so thankful? I'm not talking about uh, uh, the money in the bank. I'm not talking about the car you drive. What about the salvation that he provided for every man and woman in the town to believe on his name? Amen. That's what we need to be thankful about today. He provides salvation and deliverance from hell. If we would believe on his name, we would repent of our sins and turn to God. Oh, our lives could be totally changed today. We're going to just sing this chorus before I preach, very simply, and we're going to get started. But would you sing this with me today? Oh, let me get, me get, let me get it in the key right here, amen? You know what, I, I told them one time I was singing, and, and I started singing, and they were picking on the piano over there, and said, hey, that key ain't on this piano. <laughs> so maybe it's on that string right there, amen? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Come on, get a little bit loud. 
is fifth grade and under. Fifth grade and under may be dismissed going out the back door down this uh, first hall right here. All of the children may be dismissed to go to children's church. And if you've got your Bible, it'll be fine in your place in the book of Deuteronomy. And also you can put your finger, put put your finger in, in the book of Matthew. What's her name? Mary Lou Reddish. Remember Mary Lou Reddish in prayer. Amen. Amen. If you've got your Bible, will you find Deuteronomy chapter 6 is where we're going to go. But also you can flip to the New Testament because uh, some of you might be, be stickers about the New and Old Testament. I'm going to give you from both. Amen. Jesus quotes the Old Testament. So I want to share with you the words uh, from both today. Deuteronomy chapter 6 is where we're going to go. Deuteronomy chapter 6 for the first reading. And then we're going to go to Matthew chapter 22. Uh, and as you are finding that, I'll tell you a story that I heard uh, this week. There was a man and his family that were traveling to Jerusalem. And they get to Jerusalem and he's got his entire family along with his mother-in-law. As they are seeing all the sights of uh, this beautiful city... Uh, of David. And during this time of their traveling in Jerusalem, his mother in law dies. She passes away. His, uh, and so his wife is just so broken hearted of the passing of his mother, of her mother. So the husband goes to make uh, uh, arrangements at a local funeral director. And he's speaking to the funeral director. And the man tells him, Well, you can send your mother in law back to America for $5,000. Or you can bury her here in Jerusalem for $150. Without question, the man says, I want her sent back to the United States of, of America. And the, the, the funeral director looked at, uh, at him, boy, you must uh, really love this woman. You want her sent all the way back to America and spend, spend that big price. And he said, well, sir, he said, uh, about 2,000 years ago, there was a man buried in Jerusalem, and he rose again on the third day, and I'm not willing to take that chance. <laughs> Church, 
Do you know that everything God does is motivated out of his great love for you? I said, what God does is motivated out of his great love for you. If you question today the love of God, then that's a lie out of hell today because God is motivated by his great love. God's love is great for us. God's love was so great that he was willing to send his only begotten son to die on a rugged cross that you could be set free of your sins and be saved if you would be willing to repent. But do you know something? That God is looking for the same thing from us. I said, do you know that God is looking for the same thing from us? The Bible speaks of God's great love and that he is motivated by his love unto us and for us. Do you know that God is looking for the same thing from us? God desires a people that love him and whose hearts are his and loyal unto him. Let's look in Deuteronomy chapter 6 now. Let's listen to the words of Moses. Moses really in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is a recap, honestly, of the, of the books prior to that. And, and he gives a recap here. And there's really about three sermons broken down into the book of, of Deuteronomy. And here in this one part, this has come, this follows uh, uh, chapter 5. Of course, 6 follows 5, right? But he had just spoken, he had recapped the commandments, the Ten Commandments. And now he enters into speaking in chapter 6 of Deuteronomy. And this is what he says after quoting and mentioning the Ten Commandments. Now this is the commandment. And these are the statutes and the judgments in which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you. That you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess. That you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and commandments which I command you. You and your sons and your grandsons all the days of your life and that your days may be prolonged. Let me tell you right now. I'm going to bring a message hopefully next week on this. Obedience leads to blessings. Yeah. This Bible, the, the book of Deuteronomy sums that up. Therefore, therefore, hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you. If you are obedient, it will be well with you, and that you may be multiplied greatly as the Lord your God, the fathers, had promised you, a land flowing with milk and honey. But this is where I want to get verse 4. Hear, O Israel. I can hear Moses firmly saying this word. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is, is the Lord is one, or he is the Lord alone. He is number one. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. You notice those words and em emphasis at the beginning of verse 4. He says, hear, O Israel. He says, don't miss this. You've heard me speaking. You've heard this sermon as Moses was going through. He said, he said don't miss this part that the Lord our God, he is one. And we are to love him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. Now let's look real quickly to the New Testament before we pray over the reading of God's word. In Matthew chapter 22, it says this, in beginning in verse 34, it says this, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question. Don't that sound like a lawyer? Testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6 that we just read. Jesus did. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, he says there. This is the first and the great commandment. I want you to notice that. Don't miss that last part of verse 38. This is the first and the great commandment. Let's pray right there with the reading of God's Word. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you and I am honored, uh, God, to be standing in this uh, holy, anointed place. I thank you, O oh Lord. For your presence in this house, I thank you for the word that you have laid upon my heart, and I ask you to please.
please, oh Lord, help me to share it to, with this congregation. May God these not be my thoughts, but may everything that I speak and say today come directly from your word. And I pray that the word of God would penetrate our hard hearts, God. I pray that the word of God would penetrate our hard heads, God, that we may take this word and we may be changed by it today. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to love you more. Help us to love you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. We need your help in doing this and help reveal it in the scriptures of how to do this. In the name of Jesus, we ask and pray. And everybody say it. Amen. amen and amen. Now, a question is presented here unto Jesus. And this lawyer says, what is the greatest commandment of all, teacher? What is the greatest commandment of all, Rabbi? And Jesus says, quoting those words of Moses from the book of Deuteronomy, to love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and, and with all of your strength here. Notice, but he adds something here at the end of this. He says, this is the first and the great. This is the first and the great. What does that mean there? This is the first. This is the first. That means that it shows priority in our life. That it should show priority uh, in what to, we do and that it is a, that God's desire, what He desires most, to love God. This is the great command. Think about this. Why? Why is this the great command to love the Lord thy God with all of your soul, with all your heart, with all of your, your strength? Because our attitude towards this command defines how we see all the other commands. Mm, did you hear what I said? The attitude of this command of loving the Lord and how you see the Lord and how He is positioned and how you, your perspective on Him, it determines how you, uh, your attitude towards all of the other commands. See, the Bible makes it clear as this, that God desires the heart of, of a man. From the first covenant to the second covenant. To the Old Testament, to the New Testament, from God the Father speaking, from the Son being revealed, His desire is still the same. God desires our hearts, and He desires our love, and He desires hearts that are loyal to Him and Him alone. Amen. If that is God's desire, He says this, the great command is to love the Lord thy God. Jesus said it, Moses said it. Then what are we to do as Christians and Christians? Believers, Very simply, I'm going to sum it up in these two words. Pursue love. Pursue love. If we are to love the Lord our God with all that is within us, then we need to pursue love. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Listen to me. In order to grow in God's love, you have to pursue it. Ooh, y'all are quiet. Enough. I said in order to grow in God's love, you have got to pursue it. It's not just going to happen. God is not going to send an angel down with one of Cupid's arrows and shoot you and be overflowing with the love of, of God. I want you to listen to what she's going to put on the screen. Love for God is cultivated in the hearts of believers by efforts to pursue the first and the great commandment. This is what's wrong with too many. We're just sitting around. I just wait to be filled up with love. Love for God is cultivated. It's pursued. Amen. That's right. How was your love for your, your wife or your husband? Was it not cultivated? Didn't did There's some things that you do, amen, that you did to, to, to grow your love, amen. Think about it. We've got to cultivate our love for God. Some of you are farmers in here today. You plow, you fertilize, you water in the same way. We have to do the same thing as we pursue love for Christ and God. We must cultivate it in our hearts. Now, let me give you some reasons, first of all, why many people don't do this. Let me give you some reasons why many people do not cultivate the love of God in their heart. First of all, sometimes it is this, the condemnation of failure. Because they feel condemnation because of, of their sin or things that, that they have done. When we feel condemnation, or we feel failure hanging over us, that feeling of shame. Anybody ever had that before? In other words, you feel like I'm not worthy 
to pursue God. I'm not worthy of His goodness or what He has done for me. But let me tell you what Romans 8, 1 says. Therefore, as there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Ooh. In other words, when we ask Jesus Christ, we truly repent of our sins and say, Lord, please forgive me for what I did yesterday. The Bible says that there is no condemnation anymore. That He has cleansed us. He has forgiven us. But some people live in what I call the residue of condemnation. Even though you repented, even though God forgave you, when you, you spoke and you humbly asked Him to, you live in the residue of condemnation. What do you mean? You still feel unworthy. Listen to me right now. If that is you, it's time to cast that burden at the altar today and leave it here when you walk out. The second reason that many times people will not pursue the first commandment it is this. Very simply, mismanagement of time. One reason we don't cultivate love with God, a reason we don't take time to pursue the Lord, is because we don't manage our time well. How many of you would agree today life is busy? Life is busy. There's always something to do. There's always somewhere to go. And there's always someone to see. That's life. And it's easy to get distracted by the things of everyday life. But I want to remind you this morning, loving God is the first and great commandment. You think about how many hours a day you waste. Whew, how many days a, and how many hours a day do you waste watching TV or on the phone, looking at Facebook or something? Think about it. Redirect some of that time to your relationship with Christ. Number three, some of you may just despise and neglect the process of pursuing the cross altogether. So let us soak in a little bit. These are just my opening points, by the way. <laughs> Some of you may pursue, you, you despise or neglect for the process of pursuing the cross. You know what? Next month is February. It's Valentine's Day. Oh, the month of love. And all the Hallmark channels are going to be filled with these lovey-dovey movies and people just following it, falling in madly in love in, in a matter of minutes. They got hit by Cupid's arrow. We think that's the way that it happens. Ask some of these people who've been married for 30 and 40 years. I mean, they wish there were some Cupid arrows around. They'd stick with self, I imagine. Someday, amen, just to get through, amen. Woo, well, I even got lost where I was going with that. Amen. We think that love is just going to happen, is what I'm saying. We think that love is just going to happen. Oh, it's just going to hit me. I'm going to be in love. Love is cultivated. Yeah. Love, deep love, is, is cultivated. It's about cultivating. Think about it. We think it's supposed to happen and be, over, be overcome with the love and desire of God. It doesn't work that way. A deep, meaningful love for God. I want to stress that. A deep, meaningful love for God is a love that is pursued that is cultivated, that is worked at. It is not just going to happen. Love takes time. That's why Paul said love is patient. So quickly, I want to share with you this morning practical ways to pursue the first and the great commandment. That was just my opening point. I've got five more for you that I want you to hear today. Practical ways of pursuing the first commandment. You said that I need to pursue love. Okay, Pastor, then you tell me how to do this, how to cultivate this love in my heart. Number one is this determination. Yes, Lord. Determination. I just want to ask this real quick to those of you that have been married in here for a long time. Are there days of, that your love would you have to be just pure determination to make it through some of the things that you went through? Come on, let's, I hope you can say amen to that. Amen. I see the first row right here. She's got them. Sometimes you just had to be determined. This thing was going to work. I don't love him. I want to kill him. I could shoot him right now. But I'm determined we're going to make this thing work. Amen. Ever been there before? Amen. Woo, some of you have. Some of you broke plates. Amen. And thrown things. All kinds of crazy. Determination. When it comes in our relationship to Christ, we must be determined, make a determined decision to love God. And through that, it takes effort. God asked me this question this week, and I wrote it down. What is your vision for your life? What is your vision 
for your life. Some of you've got a vision. You've got a dream. I want this for my life. I want, I want to do this. I want to do this. But listen to me. This, we're talking about the first and the great commandment. And if that is so, this is the first and great commandment. This needs to be a part of your vision for your life. And maybe it needs to sound something like this. As I live my life, I determine to love and to glorify God with the second chance that I've been given. As I live, you might want to be a doctor, you might not want to be a lawyer, you might have a vision to be rich and all this, this, and this. But I want to encourage you as a part of the first and the great commandment, make sure that's a part of your vision for your life. That as I go through this life, I'm going to do, I might do a lot of other things, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to love the Lord. I am determined to glorify Him as I live my life. I've been given a second chance. And I'm going to glorify Him with it as I go through this life. Determined to set your affections on Him. Do you know that God notices that? Yeah. When you get determined, I'm going, to, I'm going to set my affections on Him. Can I say, I'm going to say this and, and understand this. You, you, you won't get my sermon if you don't get this part. Everybody, we've got this mentality. Oh, let your heart lead you. <coughs> let me tell you something. You've got to lead your heart. <coughs> You've got to lead your heart. You've got to guide this heart. You don't can't just go off on feelings, church. Listen to what Psalms 91, 14 says. He says, because he has set his love upon me. Listen. Because he has set his affections on me. He's directed his love towards me. He is, but he has set out to pursue me. Therefore, I will deliver him. This is God speaking, not man. I will set him on high because he has known my name. God takes notice of when you set your affections on him. Amen. God takes notice when you are actively pursuing him. Y'all remember the apostle uh, or John, John the Revelator, your Revelation, John chapter 21, 20 says this. It says this, then Peter turning around, he saw the disciple whom Jesus loved. That's John, who had also had leaned on his breast at supper. And he said, Lord, uh, who is the one that betrays you? Never mind that. I want to look to the part where it says, who leaned on his breast at supper. Don't let your little perverted mind get off track right here. This was the Son of God and his disciples. And John is sitting beside Jesus here at this last supper. And he leans over to him. He leans over to him. Sitting beside him wasn't enough, but he leans over to him and says, puts his head there on his chest. And I got to think, why in the world did John do this? And then God dropped this thought into my heart because John was determined that he wanted to be as close to God as possible. Yeah. Amen. Because John was determined he wanted to be as close to the heart of God as he possibly could be. Yeah. You've got to have a determination. I want to be as close to God. As I entered into 2019, I want my relationship to be stronger in the Lord than it ever has been. Yeah. I've kind of been just letting it go. How many of you have got plants? You've got some plants. And you know what you have to do? Some of you just you get a plant from somewhere and you don't water it. You don't fertilize it. You go, I don't know why that thing died. <laughs> Look beautiful. But you take a woman who waters that plant, who puts fertilizer in it, or, and when it needs, when it grows a little bigger, she'll put it in another pocket, put that thing in a flourish for me. Some of you have left your faith alone, you've left your relationship with Christ alone, and you wonder why you don't have the joy of the Lord. You wonder why love and the fruits of the Spirit aren't bubbling up in you. Because there's no cultivation in their life. There's no determination in your life to love the Lord. John was determined Determined to be as close to Jesus as he possibly could. You know that John was the only, it recorded, he was the only disciple at the foot of the cross when Jesus died. Make up your mind, determined to love the Lord your God as you go through 2019. Number two, Revelation. Say that with me. Revelation. Practical ways to pursue the first and great command. First was determination. I'm determined in my relationship this year. Number two is revelation. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Revelation. Revelation of God's love equips our hearts to love Jesus. Revelation of God's word equips our heart to love Jesus. Let me say it in another way. We love God with all of our hearts only when we see that he loves us with all of his heart. Mm, that's so can. I just teaching this morning. Get this. 
We love God with all of our hearts only when we fully see He loves us with all of His heart. How do I know that? Where is that in Scripture? 1 John chapter 4, or 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. We love Him because He first loved us. We love Him because He first loved us. Let me put it another way. Right there where it says we love Him because He first loved us, I can emphasize this. We love Him because we understand that He first loved us. That's what motivates us. That's what it means. When we grasp and understand the cross and what Jesus did for us, when the Holy Spirit takes that word and makes it real to our heart, that's when that love begins to bust out of our heart. The revelation of knowing that God loves us. He loves us. We love Him because we understand that He first loved us. Let me, let me bring that on down and make sure you don't you understand it. When did you first make a commitment to follow Christ? When did you first make a commitment to, to become a Christian? When you received the revelation of what He had done for you. When it became real to you. When you received the revelation of the gospel message, then you received Christ as your Lord and Savior in the same way in order to grow in God's love. We need revelation of God's love for us. How do we gain this revelation? Through the Bible. How do we gain a revelation of God's love? Through the Word of God. Y'all know what's wrong with the church? We like microwave dinners. Yeah. We like microwave food and just hand it out to make it simple and easy. Put some effort in your relationship with Christ. Yeah. How do we know the love of God? Through the revelation of God's Word. Listen to me. Passion for Jesus. Write this down. Passion for Jesus comes from the passion Jesus has for us. Amen. Passion for Jesus comes from passion that Jesus has. Some of you wonder why you don't have any passion. If you've not been connected to Jesus. Let me, let me ask you a question. I want you to answer this to yourself right here. Think about this. Do you have passion for Jesus? Would you say that? Answer to yourself. Just think about it. Do you have passion for Jesus in your heart? If you were to answer no, then I can just about guarantee that your time in the Word of God is not what it needs to be. Amen. If you were to answer no when I asked you, do you have passion for Jesus? I can just about guarantee your time in the Word of God and in, in prayer before the Lord is not what it needs to be. Why? Because passion for Jesus, I promise you, comes from passion that Jesus has for us. You want a fire, start with a spark. Man, y'all are quiet in here today. Y'all getting all this? Listen to God's Word. The Word of God is the fuel for our souls. I said the Word of God is the fuel for our soul. Yes. The Word of God is the fuel for your passion for Jesus. Yes. Know what God has said about you. If you would know what the love of God is from the Word of God, it will set your soul on fire. John chapter 3 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed or lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. Whew. Aren't you glad today that God loved you so much that He made a way that you could become a child of God? Amen. Aren't you glad of that today? Romans 5, 8 says this. When did He do it? But he demonstrate, God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners or yet sinners, Christ died for us. He lavished His love on us. When we were not worthy of it, when we were undeserving, God still loved us and He still loves you today. When you're not worthy of it, when you've done nothing to deserve it, God still loves you. And all the while, the devil's standing there in your ear and saying, you're unworthy, you're a loser, you messed up.
messed up too much, isn't it? The reason you don't have that fire is because you don't know what God says about you. Yeah. Know what the Word of God says about you. These are just a few examples. Don't just live on what I feed you on Sunday morning, on Wednesday. Get into the riches of God's Word. Number three, I've got to hurry up. Personal petition in prayer. Personal petition and prayer. Everybody say prayer. Prayer. You want to pursue the love of God, then get in prayer. You ask God for uh, that car you're driving. You ask God, God for that job. You ask God uh, for that house. You ask God for this and you ask God for that. But have you ever asked God, Oh, Lord, help me to love you the way I need to. Help me, Lord, to love you the way that I need to. Help me to know the depths of your love. Help me to know the breadth of, of your love. Listen to what Paul says speaking about love. Listen to these writings in Philippians. He says this, And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in the knowledge and in, all, in, in more knowledge and discernment. Paul said, I'm praying, he was praying, for the church in Philippi, that your love would abound more. Yeah. Do you know that we can pray for ourselves in that way? Lord, let my love for you abound more, God. Let my love for you grow. Help me to love you better than I did yesterday. Listen to this in 2 Thessalonians. He says this, Paul writing, Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and to the patience of Christ. Direct your hearts Direct me to you, Lord. Direct me to what you would have for me. Listen to Ephesians. Listen to the last one of Paul's prayer. His prayer. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love. He says that you may be rooted and grounded in love. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, what's the length, the depth, and the height of that love. To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God. He says, I am praying for you, Ephesus, that you would know the width, the length, and the depth, and the height of the great love of Christ. You know what? We can pray these same things for ourselves. Church, we can pray that prayer for ourselves. Pray that God gives us a greater uh, understanding and revelation of His love. Number four, confession. Confession. In other words, what's coming out of your mouth? Practical ways to pursue the first and the great commandment. Proverbs 18.21 says this, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. What you say is powerful. How many of you believe that today? What you say, what you speak, let me tell you something. When you don't know what to say or you don't have anything good to say, do like your mama said and don't say anything at all. You thought your mama was just being silly about that, but she was preaching to you whether you knew it or not. If you don't have anything good to say or power, then just bite that tongue. I believe that. And I've witnessed people tell themselves over and over and over again, I'm not good. I'm worthless. This is that that, that, that God does not love me. God does not care about me. How many of you have ever said that about yourself before? God doesn't hear me. God's not listening to me. God did. God, you're telling yourself these things. What you speak is powerful. Let me tell you something, young person. Stop telling yourself that God hates you. Stop telling yourself that you are worthless. Stop saying that you are not loved because that is a lie. I already demonstrated from the Word of God that everything that He does is because of His great love for you. So if you feel that you are not loved and God has forsaken you, that's a lie out of hell. Amen. Stop speaking it over your life. What you are saying matters. Speak the truth of God's Word over your life. Jesus loves me. Will you say that with me? Jesus loves me. Come on and say it like you mean it. Amen. Jesus loves me. Oh, aren't you glad of that today? Aren't you glad that Jesus loves you? 
then why don't you speak that and say, Jesus loves me. When, when, when everybody else just uh, betrayed me, what else is it? Jesus loves me. Listen to what John 15, 9 says. As the Father loved me, I also loved you. Abide in my love. In other words, continue in my love. I love you. The Father loved me. I love you. I have demonstrated on the cross. Now he says, abide in that love, in that love, no, live in that love, knowing fully that I love you. Listen uh, to the words of David. He says this. He has brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Delighted in me. You know God delights in his children. Amen. How many of you are parents and you have done something for your child and it just, just overfilled your heart with joy after you did something for them? Y'all know what I'm talking about? You delighted in your children. In the same way God delights in us as his children. I want to say something about this because that has been preached in American churches today and taken totally out of context also. God delights in his children and God loves you. God's love never changes. God's love never changes. Say that with me. God's love never changes. You write that down. But God is not always pleased with us. God is not always pleased with us. Why? You know when we can say God delights in me? We can say that after we have, have a repentant heart. Right. Let me tell you something. If you're living in sin, having sex outside of marriage, or drunkenness, or any other thing, and you're living in unrepentant sin, listen to me right now. God does not delight in you. Mm. He loves you. He loves you. But he says, not delight in what you're doing. Make sure you've got a full view of what the Word of God says about you, child of God. Let me move on. We need to repent and turn from our sins if we desire to God to delight in us. I'm going to preach a word coming up about talking about, you know what? You know what truly love, how the Bible defines love, our love unto God? You know how it's defined? Obedience unto God. You're preaching this about loving God with all of your heart, all your soul, and your mind. You cannot do it unless you get obedient unto the Word of God. I'm going to preach that in a few weeks or next week, so just hold on. Number, number, where are we at right here? Number four, we're going to confession. He delights in us, but our hearts need to be right with God. Number five, and last, and I close with this, fellowship. How do we pursue the love of God in our life? Fellowship. Can I tell you something? Church is important. Yes. In the body of Christ, we receive much of God's love through serving and sharing. We get to see God's love in action when we come to church, when we serve and we share with one another. I said earlier that we, only, we receive revelation of God's love through His Word. That's true. But we also receive that revelation of God's love through uh, our, our actions in the church, the, through the, the love of one another. Listen to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. It says this, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love. Say that with me. Stir up love. That's what the purpose of this church should be. To stir up love, and it goes on to say, and encourage good works. Not forsaking the assembling of yourself together. That means to go into church. That means going to church. Amen. That means going to church. Coming together with believers and worshiping the Lord. Being there to support one another and encouraging one another. And, 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 and stirring up to love as is the manner of some it says, assembling ourselves, not forsaking the, the assembling ourselves together, as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, so that much the more, as you see the day approaching. Listen to me. It is through fellowship with one another that we get to experience the love of God. I said it's through, it's through, it's through fellowship with one another that we get to experience the love of God. How many of you have ever had one of those days and you were just totally defeated? And you're just, just totally defeated. And somebody called you. 
Somebody in church just come up to you and put their arm around you and praying for you. Just that love, and you felt that love, and you were reminded, oh, that God does love me. You felt it through the mountains where the hands and the feet of Jesus. We express the love of God. But before I close, I want to share this with you, this difference, though. Don't miss this, though. There's a difference between fellowship and hanging out. There's a difference between fellowship and hanging out. What's the difference between fellowship and hanging out? Listen to 1 John chapter 1. It says this, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. When we get together, listen, we need to make it a priority to walk in the light. What do you mean, Pastor? The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. The main, the main purpose of fellowship is to sharpen one another. Yes. Hanging out. Listen, this is, I want to show you the difference. Hanging out is just about making small talk. But fellowship is about spurring one another on in Christ. See the difference there? Just hanging out, you're just talking, talking about the weather, we're talking about fishing, we're talking about hunting. All those things are good. That's just hanging out. Fellowship in the light is when we spur one another on to follow Christ Jesus. I want to encourage you, let our conversations honor God, when we have our men's meeting in the end of this month, don't let it just be small talk, but let it be our conversation that we spur one another on in Christ, that we speak of the Word of God and encourage one another in Christ. When the women get together on February the 9th for their women's ministry, don't let it be that they just talk about everybody in the church and gossip hour. No, that's not fellowship. Fellowship is when we spur one another on in Christ, in the light of Christ Jesus. I'll close with this. If you'll come on, brother, to the music, we're closing. I'm done. God loves you with all that He is. But you know what? God desires us to passionately love Him too. God loves you with all that He is, but He desires you to passionately love Him too. And I just gave you some things this morning to pursue that love. Stir up that passion that is within you and pursue your Savior. Yes. Deep love and passion for Jesus is not just going to happen. It is pursued. Are you willing to pursue the first and great commandment? I said, are you willing to pursue the first and great commandment in the same way that Jesus has pursued you? Would you stand up all over the house today? As we close this morning, I want to ask you a question. I want every head bowed and every eye closed for just a minute. Will you do that for me? I just want to ask you a question. I asked you this a minute ago. I want to ask you again. Do you have any passion for Jesus in your life? Think about that. Do you have any passion? True passion. Do you have real passion for Jesus? Living for Jesus. I want, I want, I want passion to pray. Do you got any passion left? If you were to say no this morning in your heart, I truly want to, I want to encourage you with all that I am to pursue that today. And maybe as we come to this time now of reflection, we come to this time, we can come to the altar. One of the things that I said about pursuing passion and pursuing the first commandment was prayer. And we're about to have a time of that where you can come to the altar. Maybe you need to speak to the Lord on Re re rekindling that fire and that passion that's died out of you. You make that commitment, Lord. Lord God, I'm going to pursue you as I enter into this new year. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for this word. I pray right now that this word would not fall upon deaf ears, but I pray that it would stir up our hearts, Lord. God, those cold places that at one time were on fire for you. At one time were excited and were passionate and we wanted to live for you and we, we couldn't wait to get up in the morning and, and see what was going to happen because we were so set on you. Those cold, those places that now have become cold, I pray that these words, Lord, would bring some life and some light to again. 
I pray that our hearts, God, would turn back to you and we would make a new commitment today, Lord, to pursue loving you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Would you lift your heads? As we sing this closing song this morning, how great is our God, I invite you to this altar this morning. Would you come as we begin to sing? Let's sing and begin with the chorus if we can there, brother. Can we do that? How great is our God.